I like to say that this is an orchestra that has four or five conductors, uh, and they're all conducting at the same time, uh, each with their own little segment of uh, the instruments, uh, the play, a role. Uh, and whether it's customer service, whether it's design, whether it's uh, buy, buying quality, uh, searching for new farms, knowing what uh, goes out the door, uh, treating the customer who walks in the store uh, with the utmost respect, uh, regardless of what their spend is. We don't look at the volume that a customer brings us or the potential growth volume. That all takes care of itself. Um, we, we really do live by a philosophy that if you take care of your customer without having dollar signs in your eyes, um, the world is going to be a magnificent place for you. And it's going to come back to you one way or another. Mm -hmm. uh, and we do live by that. I think for me, I always knew you were operating at this scale. But when I walked through the door today and you took me around and showed me that each of your employees has their own station, that was when I realized you are so laser focused on one person doing one part of the process, but also how all of the parts fit together. And that goes in again to your team. Talk to me about how once you hire them, you're keeping that culture going in the shop. Well, for one thing, we don't have hardly any turnover. And I'm very proud of that. Uh, for another part, um, I had a call center experience in my youth. Uh, and in a call center, what is very typical is you don't have your own desk. You have a desk that you can use for four, five, six hours. Uh, and as soon as you get up and your shift is over, somebody else comes and sits at that desk. You have no privacy. You don't have a place to put your family photos, uh, your personal articles, your nothing. Okay. Um, and whether you're sitting downstairs in our offices, whether you're a remote employee as we have some now, or whether you're part of the design team, I believe that every employee as part of a overall job satisfaction perspective, uh, I believe that everybody deserve, deserves their own personal space. And when we first opened this space and we moved here from our prior location and I looked at the open air, I looked at the space, I looked at the way it was designed or the, what it was like raw, I wanted, um, I guess the best way to say it, I wanted a Benihana approach to flowers. Okay, And the idea that I wanted was a customer who walks through the front door I want them to be able to pick a designer they like. I want them to develop a relationship. Uh, that's their bartender. I want them to be able to walk up to that designer, stand next to him. I want them to create their arrangement together. I want it to be an experience, okay? Yeah, so the customer's gonna take 15, 20 more minutes of our time. So what, okay? That's when we're building a relationship. That's when we get to know one another. And you wanna know something? That client, okay? who now has developed that kind of confidence in our organization doesn't need to come in, okay? He's gonna call, excuse me, he's gonna call and he's gonna say, uh, yeah, I'm so-and-so and I'd like to place an order, either delivery or pickup, doesn't matter. And by the way, I would like Nobal to, to make it for it. me because Nobal knows, my, knows what I like. And you know what? Nobal does know and we take it straight to the station um, you know, and, and he then gets to work on it. And yeah, it's that personality, it's that fun element, it's that experience um, that we've brought into the industry. Uh, and I'm really proud of that. And you know, something else you do in this space is not just have a one customer come in and sit and talk. You have events in here. You do like full blown nights where people are coming in, they're designing with your team. That's not normal for a florist, but to you, it's like, of course we're going to do that. Yeah, why not? Why? Why not? Um, it, uh, uh, it's my favorite answer, by the way. When somebody, I know. When somebody asks me, why do you always answer a question with a question? I say, why not? <laughs> and what you really mean is, I'm going to take every opportunity I can. Exactly. And, and, and you want to know something? Not every opportunity is going to work out. Right. Not every creative challenge is going to be a hit. Nobody has a monopoly on good ideas, uh, but you try things, okay? 
and then you evaluate them. Uh, how do I improve it? How did it go? Uh, do I like it? Am I in a good place with it? And then you kind of build from there. We do nights where we bring in industries, okay? Uh, whether it's the concierges in the hotels, we bring in private groups, whether it's Forbes magazine or an event planning company. We go on site and we do events. We, a good example is with Hearst magazines. We've done something uh, recently. Uh, and it just builds. And sometimes it's, uh, it's a flower buffet, uh, where people get to come in, pick their own flowers, sit with a designer. Designer helps them make an arrangement. One of my favorite things to say is that, uh, and you know, I'll have a classroom style group of 50 people, okay, each sitting at a desk with an identical group of flowers assigned to each one of them. And I'll say, you know, you got 50 people, you got the same flowers on all 50 tables in the same quantities, and you all have the same vase. I venture to say that no two arrangements are going to be alike when you're done. They're all going to be beautiful. They're all going to be beautiful. You've never done this before. Enjoy the moment. Enjoy the creativity. It's a spa for the mind.